Welcome back everyone, we are finally entering the second part of this class which is about Python programming for GIS. We have of course covered a lot of fundamentals in Python and I think we are ready to enter the second part of this class. What we are going to cover this week are uh, basics of ArcPy. So what is ArcPy? It's a sort of a module of a package that contains a lot of functions that we will be able to tap into. How we import that module, how can we get help on specific functions that we would like to uh, implement and of course we're gonna see a few exercises that will make us more comfortable with the RPI package. The second part this week we will cover different editors that are typically used. Um, of course we can implement a Python script within uh, R Pro uh, in the case of uh, ArcGIS um, but they might be sometimes need to use an editor. So editors such as Ideally, PyCharm, uh, Spider, as well as Jupyter Notebooks, uh, something that we have spent quite a bit of time on during the first part of the class and we'll see actually how we can uh, expand this uh, so that it can interact with ArcPy. Alright, in this lecture I will discuss ArcPy and give a brief introduction on the site package. First, I will introduce Python in ArcGIS Pro, then I'll talk about different Python editors such as Ideally, PyCharm, Spider, and Jupyter Notebooks. Then I will go over what is the ArcPy site package and how we can import it in Arc Pro. And then I will illustrate the function and geoprocessing tools uh, using a couple of functions such as buffer analysis and list feature classes. The data for um, the last part is available on Canvas and on the Google Drive. So Python and ArcGIS Pro uh, provide support for the use of Python as a scripting languages. Python can access all the tools in Arc Pro, including those that are part of an extension. So for instance, if you were to use, say, the geostatistical analyst or the spatial analyst, the network analyst, or whatever extension that may be, they are typically a bunch of functions that are available with those extensions, and you can access them through Python. Python scripting is a fundamental tool for GIS professionals who need to extend the functionality of our pro or automate workflows. So it could well be that in your future jobs or in the um, agency or, or the company you're going to work with, um, that you need to automate some functions. Um, and, or you may want to automate workflows, so there might be multiple functions that you are going to call in a script. Uh, so Python is actually a very good environment to make that happen. So there are a couple of things that are important to know. So if you are of the older generation like I am, I uh, learned things such as ArcInfo, ArcView, and then ArcMap came around in 204, 203. Uh, and ArcMap used to use VBA, Visual Basic, and then also had the opportunity to program within Python to call functionality. That was Python 2. No, when Arc Pro came along around 216, 217, uh, they use and they rely on Python 3, uh, which is uh, what we have been using. Python 2, Python 3 are not so different from one another. However, there are some subtle uh, differences that you need to be aware of. If you were to program something in Python 3, it may not work in Python 2 and vice versa. So this is how things would look like in uh, ArcMap and Arc Pro in Python 2 and Python 3, and where you would actually access the Python scripting environment um, in both uh, different uh, software. There are multiple Python editors, um, and we are going to use actually um, Jupyter Notebooks, which is the very last one. Um, but in my previous classes, we have used uh, editors such as Ideally, which is Integrated Development Environments. Uh, there are others such as Spider, uh, which is very useful for uh, data science, and then PyCharm, which is quite um, uh, quite nice actually in terms of visuals. However, it must be installed separately. Um, you also have the opportunity to just write uh, short commands. You can also load up some scripts, of course, but you can write some uh, very simple uh, commands in the command line, and I'll show this, of course, a little bit later. The next question we want to ask ourselves is, what is ArcPy? So ArcPy, as I mentioned, is a Python package. I mean, you can think about it maybe as 
a module if you want, but in fact, the package is a collection of module libraries, classes, and functions. The way we are going to interact with RPI is mostly to access its functionality. And again, as I mentioned, the functions could be part of the RPI or could be part of one of the extensions uh, mentioned earlier. So, for instance, example of functions could be a buffer function, a kernel function, but for a kernel function, you need a special analyst extension, an overlay operation or interpolation that also requires the special analyst. So, the very first thing that you actually need to do is to import RPI. Um, and um, this will work as long as you have ArcGIS or Arc Pro installed on your computer. So if you don't have Arc Pro or ArcGIS on your computer, you cannot call the ArcPy site package uh, because it's not installed. And so if you are using a Mac or Linux, it's not going to work out. And I have given some options there um, to remotely access a computer. So I'm going to just demonstrate this one here. Um, within the um, Arc Pro environment. Um, so if you go under the analysis toolbar here, you will see there is a small window called Python. Now there are two options. There is a Python notebook. This is a Jupyter notebook. We'll talk about this later. And the Python window. And this is really where I want to lead you right now. So this comes typically at the bottom. Um, you can, of course, Float it around, which might be a little bit nicer. Um, and so, where you're going to enter your code is actually right down here. Okay. Um, so again, this is a little bit similar to the uh, Jupyter, uh, the Google Colab that we use so far. So here we would say import ArcPy, and that would then um, load all the functionality of ArcPy. Okay. So once you import ArcPy. Um, you can also check, of course, you remember the help function here, and you could see a bunch of functions that are associated with it. You can you know, scroll this through, and um, as you can see here, package contents. Uh, it's quite, quite extensive, and it takes time to get used with DA, for instance, stands for data analysis, GA for geostatistical analysis, um, all of these sort of uh, package that, that exist exists as a for special analysis, although it also takes the name of uh, special um, and, and, and so on and so forth. And you can see that there are other packages that have been added here, like time, for instance, that has been added uh, automatically. Uh, this is not really native of ArcPy, um, and so on and so forth. There are a bunch of functions here. I'm going to pass all of those. Um, so one thing that we might be interested to do, for instance, is to check whether or not an extension exists. So, for instance, uh, ArcPy, and you can see how as soon as I type a dot here, it's going to look for those functions. Uh, here, check extension, and here I will enter special and see what it returns. It will say it is available. And likewise, you have other function here that I list to the right, like describe, describe a particular layer or a particular data, like a shapefile, insert cursor. We'll talk about this later. At least data set. Um, in a feature data set, for instance, feature class list fields, so all the fields that exist within the shape shapefile or feature class uh, to refresh active view search cursor. So those are just example of functions that we could uh, that we, we could call actually. One thing you may be interested in doing is to set up, for instance, the workspace. We can try this out. So import ArcPy, ArcPy dot environment dot workspace, right? And then you can set up here. Uh, that workspace. So, for instance, here, C TAM. And so, what that means here is that it is going to communicate with the C TAM um, to save data or uh, something like this. We could check out uh, what that um, environment is just to make sure that we did the right thing here. Workspace. And see what it tells us. And it says it is indeed uh, C TAM. No. I'd like to change this a little bit and maybe go where those uh, that data is located. So let me just double check where that data is located. Source here, and let me just add this one right here. So I'm going to go all the way to here. That's going to be my directory. And I will say archive.environment.workspace here 
is equal to, and I'll add this particular directory. No, oops, sorry. Could be that I need to put two backslash here. I'm just gonna do this very quickly. Now, for you, of course, this would be a different location than mine. Okay, and this one. Perfect. And let's see here if this will work. Perfect. And then I can run the same print arc by dot environment dot workspace. Um, I could also print possibly the different layers that exist there. <coughs> Sorry, the different feature class that exists. So I could do list here. Uh, let's see, feature class is here indeed. They seem to be here. Uh, and let's see what they say. They tell me that rot nine bus stops and rot line shape files are there. And you can just quickly check here uh, that we have rot nine and rot nine dot line. So this seems uh, to work. Let's suppose for a moment that you would like to find out what a particular function uh, is or how it works, actually, how, how you program it. You can, of course, uh, go into uh, Internet. And here I did a search on Buffer and R Pro. This will lead me to that function that is under analysis functionality. Um, you can choose other version if you were using another version of R Pro. Um, so it explains what the buffer function is, which we all know about. But what is actually interesting is really at the bottom and how this uh, buffer analysis function would work if you were working within the Python environment. So here we can clearly see we have uh, import ArcPy environment workspace defined and then running this buffer analysis. So, um, you know, Internet is a very good friend of yours uh, when, when it comes down to programming. We can see a little bit better here um, when you are looking for a function and sort of asking yourself, what are the arguments? So remember, in a function, we have arguments, arguments or parameters, right? When we're looking at distance, we needed four different arguments. We're looking at the slope, maybe we only needed two. So here, there are arguments or parameters that are required and some others that are um, optional. And in the example of a buffer analysis, what we, of course, need, we need the input features, we need the odd feature where that buffer is going to be saved to, and then we need a distance at which we want the buffer. Now, all of the other that are underlined in green here are, uh, in fact, optional. And you know they are optional because they have the bracket uh, around them. Um, and, and you can clearly see here um, to the left that those ones that have this bracket around them are all optional, right? So this is something important. You do not need to put something uh, for them if you don't know uh, what that is. So I'd like to take an example and, and, and apply this buffer analysis um, around the bus station. So some questions that may arise when you're doing uh, some sort of accessibility analysis might be, well, how many people live within, you know, say 1,000 1, feet or maybe 2,500 feet? from bus stops and some have an idea of uh, what is the catchment uh, area and how many people may respond to uh, bus stops. Um, so for this one, I'm um, going to use two different data sets. Um, and this is Route 9 in Charlotte. Uh, this is CATS. CATS is the Charlotte Area Transport System uh, for which we have bus stops and um, the route. So um, I have a you know slight piece of code here that I've already written and that we can use, of course, my data is not in CTAMP, my data is, you know, is somewhere else. So uh, what I'm going to do is just copy paste here that data, that um, location here. So it'll be a little bit easier for me afterwards. Of course, this is not exactly how I wanted it to be. So let me just change this quick. All right, here we go. Um, and likewise, I'm going to use the same for the out feature here. So, uh, some of you may be wondering, okay, what what is this? Uh, what is this all about? Um, well, um, so this is a simple code, and I'm going to copy paste it in, in just a second. I'm um, importing ArcPy. We have seen this about uh, later on, uh, earlier on. Sorry, uh, I'm specifying the workspace, uh, which here is not the right one. I apologize about this again. Should always be the same. 
Okay. Um, the in-feature class, uh, in FC, uh, these are the best stops. And out-feature class, these are going to be uh, the um, resulting uh, uh, shapefile from uh, buffering. And then here at the bottom, you have that particular uh, function. I'll make this a little bit smaller here. And I'm going to copy-paste this one here. And I'm going to paste it right here. Before I press enter here, uh, one thing that I definitely want to make sure is to see what everything seems right. Um, and if not, then, you know, try to be debugging here. So let's print enter. And you saw that very quickly, actually, it buffered uh, this, this one. Uh, so that was very good. And uh, we could test maybe another uh, value. So, so far I had taken 1,000 feet, but you know, I could take, of course, 5,000 feet, for instance, if I if I want it, here we go. Let me just make sure that the syntax is the same. So sometimes, you know, that the way we press a double quote might be a little bit different. So be careful about this one. And I will call this one 5,000 feet right here. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's see if this also works, right? So I'm copy pasting here, right here in this tiny little window up. We can see clearly we have some character issues here, um, and let's print it. Okay, and so uh, this has also been done very quickly, as you can tell. Right, this is what's the 1,000. This is the 5,000 feet buffer. So we see that this is actually working quite well. Uh, we can test different values uh, for the um, the the radius.